Guardians of the Ice Age. Towering 11 feet tall, wrapped in shaggy armor and tipping the scales at six tons. But here's the uncomfortable truth. They weren't the scariest things out there, not even close. Lurking in the same frozen wastelands was a creature that made mammoths look quaint. A beast so massive, so brutally engineered, it was less an animal and more a biological battering ram. Imagine the size of a mammoth, but fused with the destructive force of a medieval war machine. This was no gentle giant. It didn't need curved tusks or a furry coat to command respect. All it had, all it needed, was a single monstrous weapon. One so lethal, so precise, that every encounter became a high-stakes gamble with survival. This was the true juggernaut of the Ice Age, Elasmatherium Sibiricum, the creature that should have defined Ice Age dominance from the very beginning. Imagine a rhinoceros that decided regular size wasn't nearly intimidating enough. Now multiply that by roughly three, add the bulk of a small elephant and crown it with a single horn so massive it could serve as a battering ram for medieval warfare. What you're picturing is still probably smaller than the reality of a Lasmatherium. This wasn't just large, it was monumentally, almost absurdly, oversized. Standing 6.5 feet at the shoulder and stretching 15 feet from nose to tail, a Lasmatherium weighed in at a staggering five tons of pure, horn-equipped muscle. But the measurements alone don't capture the true horror of encountering this beast. The defining feature the element that transformed a Lasmatherium from merely large to genuinely nightmarish was the horn. Not horns, plural, like its modern rhinoceros descendants, but a single, massive horn that could reach lengths of up to six feet. Six feet of solid, pointed bone jutting from the center of its forehead like some prehistoric unicorn's fever dream. And unlike the mammoth's curved tusks, which were primarily tools for foraging and occasional defense, Elasmotherium's horn was purpose-built for devastation. It was perfectly positioned for charging attacks, designed to concentrate the full force of five tons of angry herbivore into a single, armor-piercing point. Any creature unfortunate enough to find itself on the receiving end of an Elasmotherium charge wasn't just facing injury, it was facing obliteration. The horn was just the beginning Strip away that intimidating weapon, and you're still left with a creature that redefined what it meant to be perfectly adapted for Ice Age survival. While mammoths were essentially oversized elephants struggling to cope with frozen conditions, Elasmotherium was purpose-built for the harsh realities of the Pleistocene world. Start with the legs, and here's where things get genuinely impressive. Unlike the mammoth's thick, pillar-like limbs that were better suited for slow, deliberate movement, Elasmotherium possessed legs that were both powerful and surprisingly agile. These weren't just weight-bearing supports. They were the foundation of a charging mechanism that could accelerate five tons of muscle and bone into a thundering, full-speed charge that could flatten anything in its path. Mammoths carried their weight in a relatively even distribution. Elasmotherium didn't. Its mass was front-loaded, designed to turn every charge into a catastrophic collision. This wasn't accidental. It was millions of years of brutal efficiency honed into one purpose, impact. The shoulder muscles alone were powerful enough to absorb the shock of high-speed collisions that would have shattered the bones of lesser creatures. But perhaps most critically, Elasmotherium had solved the fundamental problem that plagued many Ice Age giants, energy efficiency. While mammoths required vast quantities of vegetation to fuel their massive bodies, Elasmotherium's digestive system was optimized for extracting maximum nutrition from the sparse grasses and tough vegetation that dominated the frozen steppes. This wasn't just survival, it was thriving in conditions that left other megafauna struggling. Its skull, built like a natural helmet, could withstand impacts that would have been fatal to creatures with more delicate cranial architecture. This wasn't just about protection. It was about turning the entire head into a weapon system. When Elasmotherium charged, it wasn't just the horn that posed a threat. It was the entire front end of the creature, 
functioning as an organic siege engine. Compare this to the mammoth's approach to survival, which largely relied on group protection and intimidation through size. Elasmotherium needed no such social strategies. It was a solitary predator's nightmare and a territorial competitor's worst enemy, capable of defending resources and territory through sheer individual dominance. While mammoths huddled together for warmth and protection, Elasmotherium stood alone because nothing else on the frozen landscape posed a credible threat. Now we come to the feature that transformed Elasmotherium from merely impressive to genuinely legendary, that magnificent, terrifying horn. At up to six feet in length and potentially weighing as much as 100 pounds, this wasn't some decorative display piece. This was a weapon that could punch through ice, tree trunks, and presumably any creature unfortunate enough to challenge its owner. To put this in perspective, that's a horn longer than a standard parking space is wide, attached to a creature that could wield it with the precision of a medieval knight and the force of a freight train. The positioning was crucial. Unlike modern rhinoceroses, which carry their horns on their snouts, Elasmotherium's horn was mounted directly on the forehead the optimal position for delivering devastating charging attacks. This placement meant that when the creature lowered its head to charge, the horn became the leading edge of a five-ton projectile moving at 25 miles per hour. The physics alone are genuinely frightening. But here's where it gets even more interesting. The horn wasn't just a weapon. Analysis of its structure suggests it served multiple functions that gave Elasmotherium distinct advantages over its contemporaries. The base was broad and sturdy, enough to serve as a snowplow, allowing the creature to clear feeding areas that would have been inaccessible to other herbivores. In a world where food was scarce and competition was fierce, this ability to access buried vegetation was literally a matter of life and death. The horn surface was likely covered in keratin, the same material that makes up our fingernails, but structured for maximum durability. This covering would have been constantly growing and self-sharpening, ensuring that the weapon remained effective throughout the creature's lifetime. Unlike antlers that shed annually, this horn was a permanent, ever-improving tool of destruction. Recent fossil evidence suggests the horn may have been even more formidable than previously imagined. Some specimens show evidence of horn bases that could have supported structures up to eight feet long. Weapons that would have made the creature's intimidation factor approach the genuinely absurd. An eight-foot horn on a five-ton creature represents a level of natural weaponry that has no modern equivalent. Imagine being a saber-toothed cat or cave bear, creatures that were accustomed to being the apex predators of their respective environments, suddenly encountering something that could quite literally impale you from eight feet away. The horn didn't just change how Elasmotherium fought, it changed how everything else on the Ice Age landscape had to live, constantly aware that somewhere in the frozen wilderness, there was a creature carrying a weapon that could end any confrontation before it truly began. This is why the mammoth's tusks, impressive as they were, pale in comparison. Tusks were tools, useful for digging, displaying, and occasional defense, but Elasmotherium's horn was something else entirely. It was domination made manifest, a weapon so effective that it redefined the very concept of herbivore. While mammoths were busy adapting to environments that barely tolerated their presence, Elasmotherium had claimed territories that actively welcomed their dominance. The key difference wasn't just what they could survive, it was what they could control. The Eurasian steppe during the Pleistocene was a landscape that seemed designed specifically for creatures like Elasmotherium. Vast open grasslands stretched for thousands of miles, interrupted only by occasional river valleys and scattered patches of woodland. For a creature built like a living battering ram, this was paradise. No dense forest to navigate, no steep terrain to negotiate, just endless expanses of territory where speed, power, and intimidation ruled supreme. But here's what makes Elasmotherium's territorial dominance truly remarkable. They weren't just surviving in these conditions. 
they were thriving in areas where other megafauna couldn't establish permanent populations. The frozen steppes of Siberia, the windswept plains of Kazakhstan, the harsh grasslands of Central Asia, these were Elasmotherium's hunting grounds, territories where the combination of extreme cold, sparse vegetation, and brutal competition eliminated most other large herbivores. The secret lay in their approach to resource management. While mammoth herds required vast areas to support their numbers, moving constantly to find sufficient food, Elasmotherium operated on a different principle entirely. They were territorial specialists, claiming specific ranges and defending them with the kind of aggressive efficiency that made migration unnecessary. That horn wasn't just a weapon, it was a property deed, written in bone and enforced through violence. Consider the advantages this gave them during the harshest periods of the Ice Age. When food became scarce and competition intensified, mammoth herds had to keep moving, constantly searching for new feeding grounds while burning precious calories in the process. Elasmotherium simply cleared their territory of competitors and settled in for the long haul. They could access buried vegetation that other creatures couldn't reach, defend prime feeding areas that others couldn't claim, and maintain energy reserves that migration-dependent species couldn't match. The fossil record tells a story of creatures that weren't just surviving, they were prospering. Elasmotherium remains have been found across a range that stretched from Ukraine to Mongolia, a distribution that suggests not desperate wandering but successful territorial expansion. These weren't refugees from climate change. They were the landlords of the Ice Age, collecting rent in the form of exclusive access to the best grazing areas. And unlike mammoth populations, which fluctuated dramatically with environmental changes, Elasmotherium populations remained relatively stable throughout their existence. This wasn't luck. It was the natural result of a survival strategy so effective that it made them nearly immune to the environmental pressures that devastated other megafauna. For a creature so perfectly adapted to Ice Age conditions, so dominant in its chosen environment, and so well equipped for survival, Elasmotherium's extinction presents one of paleontology's most perplexing mysteries. How do you eliminate something that appeared virtually indestructible? While mammoths managed to survive in various forms until roughly 4,000 years ago, with some populations persisting on isolated islands well into human civilization, Elasmotherium vanished from the fossil record around 39,000 years ago. This wasn't a gradual decline. It was a sudden, complete disappearance that left no descendants and precious few clues about what could have overwhelmed such a formidable creature. The conventional explanation points to climate change, but this theory has some serious problems. Elasmotherium had already survived multiple ice ages, numerous warming periods, and dramatic environmental shifts throughout its history. These were creatures that had proven themselves capable of adapting to changing conditions over millions of years. Why would this particular climate shift prove fatal when so many previous ones had been survived? Some researchers suggest human hunting pressure, but again, the evidence doesn't quite add up. While humans were certainly present in Elasmotherium's range during the late Pleistocene, the idea that early human populations could have systematically eliminated creatures this large and dangerous seems optimistic at best. Remember, we're talking about five-ton animals armed with six-foot horns and the temperament of a cornered badger. Even with primitive weapons, the cost-benefit analysis of hunting such creatures seems questionable. The most disturbing possibility is that Elasmotherium's very dominance contributed to its downfall. Their territorial nature, while advantageous during stable periods, may have prevented them from adapting to rapidly changing conditions. Unlike mammoths, which could migrate to more favorable areas, Elasmotherium populations may have been too committed to their territories to abandon them when conditions deteriorated. But here's the truly unsettling part. The disappearance was so complete that for centuries, scientists weren't even sure Elasmotherium had existed at all. Unlike mammoth remains, which are found regularly and in excellent condition, Elasmotherium fossils are rare and often fragmentary. 
it's almost as if something deliberately erased them from the archaeological record. Recent discoveries have added new layers to this mystery. Some fossils show evidence of stress markers and nutritional deficiencies that suggest the final populations were struggling with environmental pressures. Others display unusual growth patterns that might indicate disease or genetic problems. The picture emerging is of a species that didn't just disappear, it collapsed suddenly and catastrophically. Taken together, the evidence paints a grim picture. Whatever eliminated Elasmotherium was powerful enough to bring down a creature that had reigned unchallenged for ages, resilient, dominant, and built to endure. And yet, it vanished with barely a trace. For an animal that once defined the Ice Age landscape, the silence surrounding its extinction is genuinely haunting. The mammoth survival story, impressive as it is, suddenly seems less like triumph and more like luck. They weren't necessarily better adapted or more resilient. They were simply the ones that happened to survive whatever eliminated their far more formidable contemporary. Elasmotherium wasn't just another Ice Age animal. It was the pinnacle of prehistoric power, a creature so finely tuned to its environment that it redefined what dominance looked like. The mammoth may have gotten the fame, but Elasmotherium earned the title that mattered most, the real titan of the Ice Age. But Elasmotherium wasn't the only behemoth history forgot, because while it ruled the frozen steppes, another titan, far to the south, was rewriting the definition of giant altogether, bigger than a mammoth, heavier, than a T-Rex, and possibly the largest land mammal to ever walk the earth. This is Roaring Echo. Thank you for watching.